Well, there you saw the sign. Campaign 2016 in the first Republican presidential debate a week from tomorrow already, August 6th in Cleveland, Ohio. But the question of who will make it on the debate stage still hasn't been answered. There are 16 declared candidates, so six of the gr of pictures in this group will not be participating in the debate. Debate host Fox News is limiting the first debate to the top 10 contenders from the five most recently conducted national polls. So who's in danger of failing to make the cut? The director of the Marquette Law School poll, the Professor Charles Franklin, is back with us. Hi, Charles. Good to see you. Good to be here. This is just a crowded field. I mean, <laughs> the, the challenge for TV graphics rooms <laughs> just to fit them all on one page is amazing. Believe me, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm trying to do graphs and fit 16 people in one graph is really quite hard to do. So how will it be determined? Well, what Fox has said is they will take the five most recent high quality polls. Now, they haven't exactly said what their quality standard is, but I think it's pretty likely that it's live interviewers, not robocalls, and that it includes cell phones as well as landlines. That would be really surprising if that wasn't their standard. Uh, the question would be, do we get five polls between now and next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? When's the cutoff deadline? If they've announced that, I haven't seen it. And then we run into the little issue of what if there's a tie, an exact right. tie in the rankings for 10th versus 11th. That's not impossible with just five polls. And with the people who are polling in the 9th and 10th and 11th spots are all in low single digits, four and five and six four and five points, really. So it could be a tie. We'll see. No, as far as it applies to Governor Walker, he's safely in. And exactly. The top is solid. Trump, uh, Bush, Walker, Rubio, those have all polled well up into the top all year long. I think there's no real question of them. Where we get down to the cusp, if you will, uh, Rand Paul is a bit over five points, so he's doing pretty good. But then you get Cruz, uh, Christie, uh, Kasich from Ohio, Perry. Kasich would get in right now, Perry would be out right now, but they're only separated by two tenths, four tenths rather, of a percentage point. So it's a it's a very close call it's right there. It's kind of like March Madness and the bubble teams, right? Remember right. the guys that are on the bubble? Those They're on the bubble. That's exactly right. And some event that could happen in the next few days that catapults one of these into a little greater prominence could show up, tipping them up pushing somebody else down. And Donald Trump, what effect is he having on who makes the top 10? In, in terms of getting into the top 10, he was probably in the top 10 even before his recent bit of a surge in the polls. So it, he probably doesn't affect who's in. In terms of the dynamics of the debate and what it's going to look like on Thursday night, that he affects a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really amazing the impact he's had here. I mean. Every word that he has said is is huge headlines, and you know the apprentice comes yes. to the presidential race. It really is. The question will be how long live this can be, because from the other candidate's perspective, this is a bad time for them because he's sucking all of the air out of their campaigns. They can't be heard unless they're saying something about Donald Trump or he's saying something about them. Mm -hmm. Um, that, again, will be one of the things to look forward to in the debate is the question of how do the other candidates choose to handle him? Do they go directly at him and try to sink him right now? Mm. Or do most of them stand back and hope somebody else does the dirty work for them? Uh, that'll be a fascinating little political game to watch. But what about the fairness of this or the mm -hmm. perceived unfairness of it, that well, all of the candidates don't get to participate? I, you know, it, it is a huge problem. Even with 10 on the stage, it's going to be very hard for any of them to get more than a couple of minutes in the debate format and the time allowed. So it's already a massive thing. I, I actually thought the idea that some people had proposed of split them into two random groups, pick four randomly from the top of the list and the rest four others randomly from the top of the list, and do two debates back and before, back, back to back with eight each. That would let you have everybody mm -hmm. in a single evening. But nobody listens nobody to what I think. <laughs> well, always good to get your insights, though, and it's going to be interesting. They're going to have to pare it down soon, get the, for, just for the sake of their party. Yeah, right. absolutely. Good to see you, Charles. Thank Thanks. you so much. Thanks for being here. And Charles will be here next week as well. I'll talk about that. All right, coming up, you don't expect 
to come home from the hospital sicker than when you went in. When we come back, Consumer Reports has some disturbing findings about infections and hospital safety. And later on News 3 at 6, we'll hear from Mayor Soglin as he introduces a new citywide green campaign. Stay with us. On the next News 3 this morning, helping those who have served our country, we'll tell you about an event taking donations for Madison's